Well, with former President Donald Trump's legal woes mounting, perhaps it's small wonder that no fewer than 12 Republicans so far have lined up to challenge him for the presidential nomination. We'll hear from one in a moment, but Democrats, of course, have a Biden-shaped problem of their own. Here is the leader of the free world forgetting which war he was talking about earlier today. Has Vladimir Putin been weakened by recent events? It's hard to tell, but he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. And he has uh, become a bit of a pariah around the world. OK, well, it's not a war in Iraq, obviously. It's a war in Ukraine. You'd think the President of the United States might know that. But this is the same President of the United States who has made a habit lately of both verbal and physical gaffes. Let's take a look. All right. God save the Queen, man. Has Vladimir Putin been weakened by recent events? It's hard to tell, but he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. So all that has happened quite recently. I'm joined now by Larry Elder, one of the 12 Republican presidential hopefuls. Uh, Larry, great to talk to you again. It's been quite a while. I think the last time I talked to you, you were calling a me minute. a stupid idiot live <laughs> on air. So I hope we can have a more civilised <laughs> conversation. And, 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 and vice versa, I might add. <laughs> uh, it's great to see you. And uh, congratulations on your, on your uh, bid to be president. Let's talk about President Biden first. It seems to me barely a, a day goes by now without some new embarrassment, either involving his physical mobility with him falling over and tripping and so on, uh, or perhaps more worryingly, the constant verbal gaffes. And sometimes they're trivial, like when he said, God save the Queen, man, appearing to forget the Queen died nine months ago and he was at the funeral. Um, but sometimes today, when he's talking about the Ukraine war, to actually mistake it for the Iraq war. You know, and last year, he was right. kind of rewriting American foreign policy in, with Taiwan and so on, with his missteps, which has to be corrected by the White House. If you put it all together, I wrote a, a right. column for the New York Post about this, which resonated quite big yesterday, that you put it all together, there's a clear suggestion here that the President of the United States is not in full control of his faculties. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, and it's, and it, as you pointed out, some of these are kind of trivial. Some of them can be written off as gaffes, but some of them cannot. For example, he was recently at Howard University and he said the biggest threat to the American homeland was white supremacy. I mean, my goodness, uh, the Anti-Defamation League uh, appears keeps track of how many people are killed by extremists, no matter the color of the extremists. And last year, there were 25. However, in 2020, there were 11, nearly 11,000 black homicide victims, almost all killed by other black people. To my knowledge, none killed by a so-called white supremacist. So this is the kind of lie that infects America, that really hurts this country. And that is one of the reasons I'm running. Not only that, Joe Biden is opposed to school choice. Pierce, there is an absolute crisis in urban America as to our government schools. Chicago, 53 government schools where 0%, I kid you not, 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. Baltimore, 13 public high schools, 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. Another half a dozen where, where uh, only 1% can. That's half of all the public high schools in Baltimore, all located in the inner city. And this lie that, that uh, Biden and the others push about America being systemically racist has murderous consequences. Okay, Namely, but, what's but called Larry, let me put this to you. Or... Currently, you're polling 1% on the Democrat side, right? So it's, it, let's be honest, it's highly unlikely you are going to be the next president of the United States. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be running and you can't make all these points. But we both know it's, it's highly unlikely. It's going to likely be... Either Joe Biden, who said he is running, and if he's the incumbent president, that means he'll run, unless something extraordinary was to happen. And on the Republican side, Donald Trump, obviously, is way ahead, right, o on your side. So what is going to happen here? I mean, if Donald Trump wins a Republican well, nomination, many people think he can't win a national election against somebody who most people think is completely out of it. Isn't it sensible for the Republicans to find a candidate that actually is not Donald Trump, who would probably have a very easy time beating Joe Biden. 
uh, shockingly, Pierce, I agree with you. Uh, I believe that there are so many swing voters in swing states who would not vote for Donald Trump if the man walked on water. In fact, if he did, they'd accuse him of not being able to swim. Now, I think at some point, as did the Democrats back in 2020, uh, Republican voters are going to realize they need to coalesce behind somebody whose last name is other than Trump, but for whom a sufficient number of swing voters can, can vote so that we can win in November 2024. And I want to get up there in that debate stage in Milwaukee. I need 40,000 individual donors. You can give as little as one dollar to get me up there in that debate stage. At the very least, you'll get a America First candidate, a Make America Great Again candidate, who will talk about the lie of systemic racism, talk about the vital need for school choice uh, in America, and the 10,000-pound elephant in the room that nobody's talking about, and that is the epidemic of fatherlessness. Seventy percent of black kids enter the world today without a father in the home, married to the mother, up from 25 percent back in 1965. You can't tell me America's more racist today than it was in 65. What's happened is the welfare state that the left pushed beginning in the 60s that has incentivized women to marry the government and incentivized men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. At the very least, if I can put these issues front and center, I will feel that I've done a service to my party, and more importantly, Pierce, I will feel that I've done a service to my country. Yeah, and that well, you is know what? I, I, I actually agree with you. I think it's absolutely right that people like you should run and you should raise the issues which are important. So, 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 so we're both, we're, so we're both, we're, we're both agreeing. I agree with you. You agree with me. Well, love is in the air. Let's not get too hasty <laughs> here, uh, Larry. But on a final point, should Donald <laughs> Trump even be allowed? I mean, obviously he's allowed to legally, but should he be allowed to run? as a candidate for president, now that he's got two indictments and is likely to face at least one, maybe two more? I would put that question to you. Should Joe Biden be allowed to run? It is obvious uh, that he's got major, major trouble. Uh, we know from these whistleblowers uh, from the IRS that the, uh, that the investigation uh, was roadblocked. Uh, we've got evidence that uh, Joe Biden was on the take for maybe $5 million for policy decisions in favor of Ukraine uh, and Burisma. As far as I know, he isn't even being prosecuted. There's a two-tiered system of justice in this country, and I don't see why Donald Trump should be held accountable when Hillary and Joe Biden are not. Well, I think they should all be held accountable, but they should all be treated equally, and they should all be treated exactly they the should. same way. And on that point, I agree with you. Uh, Larry, good to talk to you. Let's end it before we ruin it and start abusing each other. It's great to have you back on, <laughs> on the show, and we'll talk again another time. Good luck to you.